on behalf of Peter and I and the Maggie, because the Maggie is hosting this, want to thank everybody for coming. And it's a celebration um, to remember our, our wonderful friend Marlene and to celebrate her life and her, I don't even know, saying her spouse, her lover, her love of lover. her life, um, beloved. her beloved. And I'm so grateful that you're here, and I'm so grateful that you let all of us tell you how much we love you both. Thank you. <coughs> what I remember is she planned things well, helped keep things organized. Yeah. Details were coordinated and nicely. I remember a time I was flying to visit Ted and Marlene in Japan. I flew in from Boston, and she met me in the airport in San Francisco and gave me a packet full of information for the trip. We were not on the same flight, but she met me again in the Tokyo airport, and we found our way back to the house in Fujisawa together. I remember once on my visit to England that the apartment was small, but she gave us a guided tour of the apartment where she gave each part of it a name that made it sound bigger. I remember Ted was giving me a ride from the airport in England, and we got a flat tire. Marlene was the helpful voice over the phone, making sure we had a bed and breakfast to stay in overnight. She made things work. There are many more memories. And, and I myself wanted to say that she was a precious sister to me. Um, the minute Ted um, brought us together, uh, we clicked and felt like sisters. And um, her brother Steve was kind enough to say that I was her treasured sister that she'd always wanted to have, and um, it meant everything to me that she asked me to come and be with her as she was dying. Um, we had we'd had such wonderful family time um, living, so to go through this part, the end of that part together was just. Ah, just meant everything, and I just feel so grateful for this incredible hospital community of you that you have. That that she has such deeply caring friends who've been so kind to me too. Um, feel very grateful. Thank you. And I have wonderful memories of having fun with you. It's great to have fun. We. We uh, drove around England. We went to the Sherwood Forest together and pretended we were Maid Marian. Okay. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> you are welcome. You are part of the stock now. You are part of the Thank you for hosting us. It's a wonderful place to get together. Uh, as I was driving over, I was remembering Marlene, and I had a uh, habit lately of putting some thoughts together on the road. <laughs> I have a habit lately of uh, putting together some thoughts on the road, somewhat rhythmical. So, uh, without any sort of written, I thought I'd say how wonderful Marlene was to be here. Um, Compared to uh, all the challenges that, that uh, Ted has had with all of his endeavors, she was far more serene. <laughs> Taking in uh, everything, and I think she's in a far happier place, and where the land is happier. And mm. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Meredith? You Sister know, I, Meredith? I would just say that. Um, she was such a great addition to our family. She brought a lot of a lot of us together. Um, she was warm, welcoming, generous, and nurtured. I like like to say about nurturing it. Each of us in our own way. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. She was one of a kind. And yeah. She would zero in on on, on each person. Um, in need or whatever. Right. And she would help with it. And she's your sister? I was, <coughs> I was always impressed by Marlene and how great she was at organizing and getting along and getting things together. And even in the Nelson family, how much she reached out. She's the one who posted the last reunion of the Nelson It was a lot of her energy that kept you folks 
visit the family, Randy, her affair. Uh, she's a remarkable person. Uh, I mean, she tried to run to Ted Nelson's life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to say I didn't know Marlene well, but I've I've spent, been in her aura, her wonderful aura, three or four times. And from the very first instant I met her, I think it was at a party in her ring when he was doing her and I was The instant we saw each other and started talking, I felt this instant sense of recognition and connection. She felt like a kindred soul from the very moment. Which is unusual for me. I'm usually very shy and I'm slow to warm up to other people. I'm kind of introverted. But with her, it was just right there. And while we were standing there talking, a woman came walking over to us at this party. She introduced herself. She said she was a psychic. And she said, I've been watching you. She said, not only do you look similar, it's kind of people here have said that there's a, there's a, a resemblance, but she said, you do have similar energy patterns. She said, I see a real connection here. And we were like, wow. You know, she, she tuned in on something that was going on. So whenever, the rare times that I had to do my name, I again feel that sense of, of I don't even understand what it is, but she seemed to make a way into my heart and people. So, blessings. And I, I saw that beautiful connection she had to do and I was so delighted that you had found someone who was a soul Thank you. Any, any other thoughts? Anybody else? Hey, Karen, come in and say something. Here's Karen Engelbart, the widow of Douglas Engelbart. Oh, we should have Oh, it's your turn. Oh, okay. Um, Marlene was good at the thing that I think is the thing most worthy of celebration, which is her love. And she was courtly in her love. She, I watched her love Ted. Courtly love is service love. And she adored Ted, and she loved every second. She did, she put her brilliant career aside to, to truly live, in a sense, to live for, for her love of Ted. And she took really good care of him. So that was, that's one huge memory I have, and, and I'm really inspired by that. She was also just so elegant all the time and down to earth at the same time. I mean, she brought, uh, the Nelsons would come over a lot and even stay with us for a few weeks sometimes. And um, she just had such a sense of, of decorum and, and poise when we'd celebrate meals in the backyard. And she just uh, she just had a touch that was magical. And she was such a heart goddess to Ted. She was, she was a movable heart goddess um, in that they were moving back and forth uh, from the farm to, to here. And, um, and she just did it so effortlessly and so gracefully. So, I mean, I, and I loved, she also taught me certain things, like I was going through a tough time and she taught me, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I really appreciated that, that what the lightness, the levity that she gave me in the middle of some very difficult times, and I, another memory is we, we danced together around Doug at the computer museum, she just had this Juana Beeb and we just enjoyed that, so I don't know, she's just a precious soul, I just adore her. And she was a light. Thank well, you, Karen. That was for just stepping in. <laughs> being handed the mic. That was tremendous. Karen and her husband married us at the Civic Center. Oh. Right. I didn't know Marlene real well. And, you know, obviously, like a lot of people in the docks, we say hello and get to know as time goes on. And over the last couple of years, we've gotten to know each other more. But, the sofa bed. And she decided she wanted a sofa bed. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my life. So. But she was she knew what she wanted. And I knew she was dying and that she wants another bed. Jesus Christ. She she but she no, this one's this one's an inch too wide. No, this one's the wrong color blue. And I'm here going, Oh my goodness. But I could not help but admire. She knew what she wanted. She wasn't going to settle for anything that, anything else, and I like that. I mean, I, I, I like a woman who knows what she wants. And so, uh, but that, that, that entire experience 
taught me an awful lot. Right? <laughs> and thank, thank you so much for arranging that. It worked out perfectly. You know, she, she, had, she had what she wanted. Yep. And you, what I remember most of that experience with you, you, know, she, you were sitting there, and when she was saying what she wanted, you just looked at her and went, whatever you want. Whatever you want. I mean, you weren't trying to reason with her, saying, this color blue is just fine, or this color brown is just fine. You said whatever you want. You had there was I so much love. I had learned. From you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have had that videotape so I could show Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Mm -hmm. You know, the wording that you sent out the email, um, early in the past, and um, I, you know, I wanted to come by, but I didn't know what to do, what to bring. And my daughter was visiting. We made these cupcakes. And she said, why don't you take a cupcake? It seemed like a strange thing to, to take over. But I don't know, it just, okay, it felt right. So I did. And when I brought it to you and I gave it to you, your face lit up. And you proceeded to tell me the story about how she had been a champion cupcake baker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not only a champion cupcake baker, but had figured out a way to not create the tunnels in the cupcakes. <laughs> I think at the age of 12. And as you were telling the story, there was just this joy about it. And I, I really think that stories are, are healing. And at that point, as you were as you were telling the story, I felt like it was a gift from Marlene. This memory that triggered the story that you were able to tell that brought a smile and that is part of her story. So I thought it was a gift from Philip. Thank you, Guy. Is there anyone in this group that was even aware that we could tell us in that We know now. We don't have to deal with them. <laughs> Obviously not made by Marlene. Okay. No, no. <laughs> but the nice thing is the knowledge was on. And I swear the next time any of us make cupcakes, we're going to be <laughs> have to have that. It's a wonderful life. Yeah. Here, here.